Thank you. Um, I must admit, I thought I had this uh, presentation sorted uh, more, than a, more than a week ago, but uh, the weather changes and, uh, and all of a sudden we've got, uh, we've got a few extra things to talk about. Uh, uh, so I'll actually, I'll actually start, um, start the talk um, on the event of the past uh, week, week and a half, uh, but most of this will be about uh, the, the, the climate drivers, the La Nina, uh, the two La Nina events uh, we've, um, we, we, we've experienced. Uh, because it is La Nina that explains, um, uh, for the most part, uh, the very wet conditions we've had in Australia for the past uh, two years. Um, I'll also reflect on the, on the forecast uh, we issued, um, particularly one that was issued in, in November uh, for, the, uh, for the summer just gone, um, and uh, have a look at how well that went. Um, and then you can't come to these things and not talk about uh, what's likely for the uh, for the next uh, the next season? Um, I'm going to let this loop through a few times, uh, just while I talk about some of the uh, some of the features um, of, of of this. Um, a lot of the rainfall we've seen over the past uh, past week and a half um, is due to this um, this very slow moving low pressure trough. Um, that extended from the northwest into the in, into the southeast. We start the loop now, um, just over the northwest here, uh, where the mouse, uh, where you can see the mouse here. Watch this explosion of of, uh, of moist uh, tropical air here. Um, all that being fed in through this uh, trough system from the northwest and from the northeast, um, through the inland down into the southeast, where um, of course where we've had the very heavy falls um, and the and the flooding. Um, also, the absence of any activity through the southwest here. You'll find cold fronts try to do the best to, to affect the southwest. Uh, big high pressure system here. They just weaken and uh, slip, um, slip south of the continent. Just towards the end of the period, the development here of the um, of, of a low pressure system affecting the, the uh, southeast of Queensland. Uh, so just when it looks like one part of the country might actually miss out on some heavy rains, it gets, uh, it gets hit at the, at the end of the, uh, the period. Uh, so accumulating the rainfalls over, those, um, over the seven days, ending the 4th of, uh, 4th of March, um, the very high rainfalls again from, um, uh, from, from the northwest here extending down to the, uh, to, to the southeast. Um, many locations uh, in the in the southeast, actually broke their seven-day uh, rainfall uh, total. So we had 15 uh, locations in in New South Wales, uh, the highest at Threadball, 442 uh, millimeters, well at, well ahead of the previous record, which was from the mid 19 uh, 1970s. Um, 25 in 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 Victoria. Uh, Mount Buffalo, um, uh, the highest, uh, 525 millimetres, again, well in excess of the previous uh, record. Um, southern New South Wales, um, locations there breaking, uh, breaking their average monthly um, rainfall by around about seven or eight times. So an extraordinary event. Um, and uh, um, what, what one in South Australia? I think Lee Creek in, in, in South Australia was, uh, was another one. Uh, where records rec records were broken. Um, back on the two-year uh, story, um, and this is predominantly about uh, about the two La Nina events uh, we've uh, we, we, we've experienced. Um, uh, the first one, which kicked in from the spring of uh, tw 2010, uh, one of the one of the strongest in in living uh, memory uh, events. Uh, the heavy rains extended from spring 2010. Uh, through to autumn uh, 2011, um, and then uh, with a resurgence of a, of a La Nina into le late um, 2011, um, just when we thought we'd seen the back of it, uh, we get an another, another big rainfall event, um, the one that's just, just finished earlier this week. So 2010 was the third uh, wet wettest uh, year on record. Uh, 2011 was the second uh, wettest, but more notable was that two-year period, the two-year rainfall 2010 uh, to 2011, um, the wettest um, in the historical record, which extends back to 19, uh, 1900. Uh, beating the, 
uh, just beating the previous record here, the 73, 74 total by a couple of millimeters. Um, so the, the, this more recent uh, event, um, initially uh, considered uh, weaker, and I'll show the evidence uh, for, for that. Um, it has continued to have significant impacts, of, of course, uh, but as I'll show towards the end of the talk, uh, that there are, uh, there are strong uh, signs that that event is in decline. Let's have some pictures of rainfall over the, over the past two years. So on the left-hand side, 2010, the right, upper right-hand side, the 20, um, uh, 2011. Uh, interestingly, in 2011, southern Queensland and a good part of northern New South Wales actually experienced average rainfall. Uh, the two-year accumulations on the bottom uh, left here uh, for 2010-2011 and on the bottom right for 73-74. Uh, uh, These are decile maps. Um, so the bright reds are the lowest on record, the bright blues are the highest on record, and then uh, in between there we've got the low lowest 10%, the next lowest te uh, 10%, all the way up to the, uh, to the highest 10% uh, highest of the record. It almost looks, uh, I, I guess, that 73, it looks a bit surprising that 70, 73, 74 should not be the, the, the wettest. Um, it's largely because in terms of absolute rainfall, that it, it is these high totals over tropical Australia that actually, um, actually bias the Australian average uh, rainfall. Another interesting thing about the past, uh, the past couple of years has been um, has been the dry conditions that have continued over South Western Australia. Indeed, dry last year uh, in this region, but also uh, very warm. The warmest, the warmest year on record for a good part of the Southwest um, in 2011. The floods, um, just to, by way of comparison, um, on the in the top right here, we've got the Jan January 2011. Um, the bottom. Uh, bottom left, January 2012, and then February uh, 2012. Um, uh, the, red, uh, the red triangles um, are the, the, um, the gauges which have recorded major uh, flooding. Um, orange is moderate flooding, and then the green is minor flooding, and then you'll see, you'll see lots of blues there where there's no flooding at all. Uh, so January uh, 2011, um, widespread and severe, uh, severe particularly around the southeastern Queensland uh, area. Um, down the Darling, um, through northern and central Victoria, and even northern Tasmania, we're experiencing flooding then. This year, uh, January uh, 2012, um, flooding around southern, uh, southern Queensland, nowhere near as extensive back, as back um, in January of the previous year. Um, into February, a bit more extensive, a bit, bit further, uh, further westward, and then we have March. Um, and the March, with the flooding now, of course, slipped further, further south, um, west of the Divide, uh, through, through the Highland region, and into, uh, uh, into East, uh, East Gippsland. Another time series I'll show here, um, this is the, an indicator of the busyness of our flood forecasters um, since uh, July uh, 2004. Um, I'm not a flood forecaster, um, so uh, I think they had a fairly easy time uh, for quite a few, few years here. Uh, things got interesting for them through, um, through uh, 2009, 2010 and onwards. Um, of course, we don't have uh, the full story here. We don't have the March, um, uh, the March and possibly April um, 2012 uh, values here. Um, but just in this uh, short period, very clear, um, just, uh, um, just what a, a sort of an extraordinary um, few years we've, uh, we, we've had. Right, the climate, uh, the climate drivers now. So I'm going to talk a bit about the, uh, the La Nina events. Um, of course, uh, La Nina's arise as a consequence of cool waters in the tropical uh, Pacific Ocean, and they're generally sustained for a period of around about 12 months. That's exactly what's happened um, in 2010-11 um, in um, and 2011-12. 
Um, and one of the big differences, and on, on the right-hand side, I've got some sea surface temperature anomaly analyses. Now, these are differences from uh, the long-term long -term average. Uh, the top one is what, was, uh, what the temperatures were in spring 2010, and the lower right is spring uh, 2011. Um, so while, while both, um, uh, both periods were characterized by very cool uh, tropical Pacific um, waters, um, the conditions around the Australian region were very different. Uh, far warmer um, in, in spring 2010 uh, compared to, um, compared to uh, 2011. And there's no doubt um, that um, these warm waters um, enhanced the, enhanced the rain <coughs> rainfall we experienced over the summer of 2010. Uh, 2011. Interestingly, um, certainly didn't start out as warm in um, spring 20, uh, uh, 2011, but as the summer progressed, we had some, um, we had the return of very warm uh, conditions around most of most of Australia um, by um, uh, by the end of this the, the summer, and I'll show a graphic of that of that later. Um, so the atmosphere responds to the conditions um, in in the in, in the oceans. Uh, so on the bottom, uh, the bottom left here, um, we've got the Southern Oscillation uh, Index, which is a measure of the difference in pressure between uh, Northern Australia and an area in the Central Tropical uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean. Um, the very high uh, positive values of the Southern Oscillation Index um, shown um, the extreme nature of the La Nina event um, through 2010 into early uh, 2011, uh, SOI values exceeding uh, plus 20 for a good period uh, then. Um, so that was the, the, the 2010. We, we got back to neutral conditions uh, uh, for, a, uh, for a short period, uh, but, but towards, uh, towards the end of 2011, um, uh, the Pacific waters cooled and the Southern Oscillation Index started to trend positive. Um, but by spring 2011, nowhere near as positive as what there had been in the, in, in the previous year. And indeed, these levels, um, that, th this cuts off in, um, in October and November, uh, but the actual values we've experienced through December, January um, have been far less than, uh, than what we had last year. So in, 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 in global or in regional terms, this La Nina, certainly nowhere near as strong as the one we'd had had before, but as we've seen with, uh, with El Nino events, um, that doesn't always actually play out in terms of uh, rainfall 